Ahoy friends and welcome to the first video in this series about recreating my Kaylin Amnell costume from the TV show Legend of the Seeker. In this video I'm going to walk you through how I created the corset and the belt for her season 2 purple costume. If you are new to my channel and you are interested in why I chose this costume and my thoughts about recreating it, please check out the previous video in this series which is here about why this costume is important to me, how it has always been a dream to recreate it, and my approach to adapting the design to my body. Before I showed you how I made the corset, I wanna talk a little bit about the differences between the three corsets that she wears during the show. The main difference between the corsets are the way the edges are finished and how the corset cups are attached to the main body of the corset. The season one corset also features these attached hip gores, which cannot be seen in the season two version. In the season one corset, the binding of the corset is made out of leather, and here you can see it continues around the corset cups. In the season two corset, the cups are attached directly to the main body of the corset, and then there is a sateen binding instead of a leather binding. I do intend on making all of her costumes from the show, both season one and season two, but I'm going to be making the season two corset since the second season purple costume features the corset on the outside of the costume, as opposed to her other two costumes where the corset is worn underneath. The costumes from the show were made by Shed Eleven Costume House and were auctioned off after the show was canceled. I was a huge fan of the show at the time, so I meticulously saved every image and description of the costumes that I could find. From this, I learned that the corset was made entirely out of leather, had cotton sateen for the cups and the binding, and that the silver metal pieces were made in-house. Since I was a college student and couldn't afford to buy any of the costumes myself, I went ahead and contacted the winners of the costumes so that I could ask for additional pictures of the interior. And I'm very, very appreciative of the buyers that I had contacted because they sent me some amazing interior photos of the costume. After many years of holding on to these detail shots, I had just stewed how I was going to put this together for many years and if you have watched the previous video on this series you'll understand why this is such an important costume to me to recreate. I learned a lot of new skills with making this costume including silicone mold making, pewter casting, and working with art clay silver. And with all of these new skills under my belt I feel a lot more confident about finishing off the rest of the costume. Now that I've given you a basic overview let's get right into making it. I started this project by first draping my pattern for the corset on my dress form. I like to use tape to build out the lines. I will drape each piece of the pattern in muslin, marking off the waistline and grain lines as I go. This does use a lot of fabric, but this way I have a piece of muslin for each individual pattern, which I can pin together and check the fit of before I move on to transferring it to paper. Once I have everything pinned together in muslin, I put it back onto the form, true up any lines, mark in my waistline, and just do a basic test fit. I also made sure that I had the bust cut position marked accurately on the pattern. Once I was happy with the fit of the muslin, I transferred these pieces to paper and then cut them out in suede for my first mock-up. Next I took the bust cups and I draped a piece of bias cut sateen over the cups, forming the three pleats as I went. I did a lot of pinning here to make sure that the pleats were laying in the position that I wanted them to go in and then I basted it around the cup so that everything stayed in place. Then I took this pattern off of the bra cup and I transferred the lines so that I could cut a second one of them out of another piece of sateen. I chalk marked the lines where the pleats needed to fold and then thread basted lines through them so I could easily see where they were from the right side. So this is the second mock-up of the corset pattern. The first one had too little room back here so it was pulling and starting to drag up over the roundness of my back so i split up the seams and then let it fly, flare open and then inserted fabric but as you can see it is actually a little bit too much because now i have these side flaps so what i'm gonna do is uh split open a couple of the bottom edges of these and overlap them just a little bit now that i have more room right here for my fat to distribute down a little bit I can kind of shape this a little better I think what I'll do is once I kind of lay these down like this I'm gonna redraw this bottom edge 
But I also noticed that hers in the back does come down to a little bit of a point and I've rounded mine and that's I've been re-watching the second season so seeing it a little bit more than I had in the video so I'm gonna round this uh, I mean I'm gonna point this down a little bit I'm gonna put this back on my bootstrap form the straps are definitely better now this is also the third version of these straps I'm still getting like a little tiny bit of this like point hanging out and I want these to sit pretty flush so I might just bring these in again just a tiny tiny bit so I brought it in on this end but I, I pivoted from this point and I think I actually have to overlap it only like an eighth of an inch so very very little I did move in the center seam so I brought the cups a little bit closer together and I think this is a lot better it feels it definitely feels better so the cups are pretty much what I'm gonna end up putting on the final one. I used the sateen fabric. Uh, I'll probably just undo the binding on the edge because it does have to go all the way around, um, but I like the fit of the cup, so that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> so my next bit, I'm gonna go in and just play with this and uh, see, see how much better I can get it to fit. I'm gonna go do this in front of a mirror because I can't really see via the camera. So the next mock-up I made was definitely fitting better throughout the hips, but I was seeing a lot of wrinkling happening on the backside, which means I needed to add just a little bit more space. Um, what I ended up doing for my next mock-up was spreading out the panels in the back just a little bit more, and I also lowered the waistline location on the back. So this was my second mock-up, and then here is my third mock-up where I have alleviated some of the waistline stress that was happening in the back. I was really happy with the fit of this one, so I went on to yet another mock-up made entirely from leather. Doing the mock-up in leather allowed me to practice with some of the seaming, practice with some of the top stitching, and get a feel for how this would look like and feel like in an actual leather hide. I am really happy with how this mock-up came out. As you can see, I am overjoyed. Uh, this leather is not very different than the final leather that I ended up using, and I had plenty of it left over, so I wasn't afraid to make mistakes in it. So I'm doing some dyeing today for the Kaylin fabric. I bought six yards of this sateen. It is a very dark eggplant color, but it has a little bit of a brown tinge to it. It's got a little more yellow in it than I would like. So I am dyeing it with some purple dye. We'll see if I can get an overlay happening on it. Purple dye was a little bit difficult to find. Um, I know they make an eggplant, but I could not find the eggplant anywhere. So I have two bottles of regular purple. So my washer is currently filling up. I'm going to mix the fabric in there with a cup of salt and a little bit of laundry detergent. And let's see what happens. In the meantime, while that's dying, I am also cutting out the actual leather for the corset. So I have this giant hide that I purchased from Leather Hide Store after I got a swatch of it. So it's this beautiful olive green color. And my hope is that once I have it up against the purple that it is going to be ah, perfection. So I'm doing this today. I also ordered some more silver clay for the bottom pieces of the corset and for the little strap piece right in here. I also ordered a pewter ingot because I'm going to try to cast the belt pieces in pewter rather than doing them in silver clay because one little tiny thing of silver clay, which was enough to get just the swirls, was $40. I used almost an, a whole second package on just the middle silver piece, and I still have three large silver pieces left to make, and it's adding up really fast. So hopefully with the pewter, I can save a little bit of money and I can make three identical little silver belt pieces later on. So that's where I'm gonna end this little bit of vlog, so I will check in with you in a bit. Speaking of metal clay, here's some footage of the first piece of silver clay that I ended up firing. Art Clay Silver is a product that contains pure silver in a moldable clay format. Once the clay dries, it can be fired in a kiln or with a torch and it leaves behind 100% silver. It is a fairly expensive material to work with, but it does give you this brilliant silver piece when you're finished. The first metal pieces that I made for the corset were all of the swirls. I figured these were an easy piece to start with so that I could practice getting used to the material and how it behaved. Let me tell you, I broke four of these before I managed to get a thickness and consistency that I was happy with. Once the clay was dry, it could be fired with a torch 
and then polished with a metal bristle brush and then I patinaed them with liver of sulfur. This gave them a slightly weathered appearance to them and then I could buff them and shine them to the finish that I wanted. Doing the smaller metal pieces definitely was good practice as when I when it came time to make the larger pieces I was getting a feel for how long I could let the clay dry to make it easier to sculpt and cut with a with an exacto knife. I made the larger metal pieces for the corset by zooming in on them with my phone and then tracing the actual pieces off of a photograph. Then I went in with a small exacto knife and sculpted out the piece in the clay, let it air dry for a day, and then fired it with my torch. You really need to make sure that the silver piece that you start with is as smooth as you can get it before you start firing it because any lumps, bumps, or ridges are going to show up in the final silver piece. This was the most tedious part for me because I have very little patience for sanding and working with small details is really hard for me. So this process took several weeks for me to be happy with the pieces that I, that I made. In between waiting for more clay to arrive, I started working on the leather belt. I wanted to make this leather belt as accurate as I could to the movie, so I bought some tooling supplies, a piece of raw vegetable tan leather, and got to work on tooling the belt design. And worked on this for about three or four hours getting the entire design stamped into the leather. Once the design was stamped, I went in with a burnishing tool and wet the edges and burnished them so that they would be nice and smooth and finished. Once the edges were burnished, I could go in and dye the leather with some leather dye and a sponge. Hi, so I thought I'd give you all a little update on where I'm at with Kaylin. I have a bunch of stuff sort of in progress I've redone things several times. I am just having a hard time with keeping things looking like a real object and not a costume prop. And I think that has a lot to do with my background in making stuff for a Morbla and things like that. They just don't look like real metal. So, you know, it is a learning process. So where I'm at right now, I have the body of the final corset being sewn up. Um, I have to put the grommets in and do the boning. I have taken apart the old mock-up. So now I have the bra cups back out. I have dyed my fabric so it's a little more purple now. It's very very slightly more purple but it's just enough to give it a little bit more warmth and I really like how the color looks with the green. I know it's reading very very olive. I mean it is pretty olive but the real one is pretty olive as well uh, but I'm very very happy with this vine with this um, leather and with my sateen. I have almost all of the metal pieces done. I have one more swirl left so that is I'm gonna try really really careful here to to show this to you there i just finished um carving these or carving trimming warming sculpting sculpting is a good word so i have one more swirl left and then this is the bottom metal piece on base of the corset i have the there's these little like silver strap connectors that have the little swirl on them i think i'm going to try to cast those in pewter speaking of i had some epic fail um with making <laughs> a belt buckle out of warbla this was art clay with warbla over it and then i tried to i tried to use it later to make a mold and so it's got all of this, this stuff on it but i hated it i really did not like the shape of it at all so i have this new one so this is the new one this one is made out of fimo which is an oven baked clay so now i'm going to cast well i'm going to make a mold out of this one with the mold max 60. so i made a little box so i'm going to put this in the little box on the bottom and and then I'll cast it in pewter and then I have just a little attachment that I want to make on the back of it so it looks like this and that's going to be what hooks it onto the belt. Uh, I decided to do this just as a single one part mold because I honestly like a two part mold as it, it's not as complicated as it looks but I just am afraid of that little connection. I don't want to have a seam here and it's it just it's making me nervous. And I want this to be as simple as possible. So I'm gonna make a single mold out of this one. And then I have another mold going, and that is for these little belt pieces. So there are three of these on the belt. I originally made these in Warbla, so I can show these to you. So I originally made all of the little connector bits out of Warbla, and like these parts don't look so bad. I'm not super unhappy with these bits. I think I'm gonna leave how this looks because it just connected really well but I just hated the way that the warbler looked 
for the other two pieces. So I'm gonna go back in and redo that. And hopefully the pewter casted belt loop, hopefully the pewter casted belt buckle looks a lot better. My pewter is on its way, so we'll see how that goes. I finished this belt, which I'm super happy with how this came out. I think it just looks so fancy. The dyeing was not very, very hard. The, the tooling wasn't as difficult as I thought it would. I'm a little bit concerned with the paint that I had used um, for the original belt buckle had been scraping off onto this, which is a little scary. So that's another reason why I wanted this to be real metal, because then I won't have to deal with paint flaking off onto my nice tool dyed belt. I went with the, the pewter option because the art clay silver, as beautiful as it is, is so pricey for the amount that you get. So the little package that you get is very small. <laughs> It is. So the Art Clay Silver comes in these little packages. 20 grams is about $45. I have bought three of these so far um, and I used almost an entire package just on the silver bits for the, the swirls. This one has about half of it left and I just did that for this bit and this swirl. These are the other metal pieces for the top half of the corset and these, I'm really happy with how they came out. It's again, just a lot of silver clay for, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's not a lot of silver clay for a lot of money. So the pewter, because I have to cast such, because I need such big pieces for the belt, I'm thinking that this is a more cost-effective option. And I really don't need them to be real silver. I just need them to be metal. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> I am all for saving money because I have spent hundreds of dollars on this costume so far and have basically nothing to show for it so far. So, yay. So my plans for this week are to fire these tomorrow once they're dry. I'm going to work on finishing up the body of the corset. I have to put the boning in and then do all of the decorative stitching. Then I have to cut out a lining for it, put grommets in, finish sewing the cups with the pleats on the front of it, and fix my strap pattern. I didn't like the straps that I had drafted for the, the first couple mock-ups. I wasn't really paying attention to the straps too much. And then I can make a female version of the little swirl thing as long as my first iteration of casting with the pewter goes well. I think I'm gonna do these little guys first because it's not a lot of material. It's not a lot of the mold max for the making the mold and then it's not a lot of pewter and I need three of these. So if it goes <laughs> well, I can make several of them with uh, one batch relatively quick. So that's where I'm at. I will update y'all later. I'm excited about this. It's just, it's a lot of stepping back and making sure that I'm going really slow and getting it to where I want it to be. And that is a little bit stressful for me because I really, really want this to look best that it can. And it's been a really long time since I've had a costume that's made me act and take it this slow. And it's, I, it can quickly become a money pit and I know that I will want to have it up to look at for a long time if I can do this right. We'll see how that goes. So I will check in with you guys later. So I didn't actually get a whole lot of footage of me sewing the corset together, but I did get some footage of me doing the decorative top stitching on it. As you can see, I didn't film this very well. Um, I'm definitely out of frame, but I went through and did the top stitching on the outside of the corset with a leather needle and a walking foot. This was very tedious and I made sure that the boning that I used was a thin plastic zip tie because I knew that I could stitch over the boning and not have any issues with breaking my needles. Once I had the corset body stitched up, I went in and added grommets. The actual corset in the show is done with rivets that are put in backwards and I spoke with one of the stitchers on the show and she mentioned that they did this on purpose so that they wouldn't look so stark on screen. However, I was really nervous about the rivets falling out, so I went with regular grommets in this case. I also went in and stitched up a lining and bound the edges of the corset. Again, I didn't get this on film, but the process is very similar for other types of corsets that I've done. Once I had the lining in, I was able to go in and stitch the metal pieces to the front of the corset. Then it came time for the scary mold making process. I'm using Mold Max 60 here, which is specially formulated for working with high temperatures. Since I was going to be using pewter, 
I needed a material that was going to be able to withstand the heat of the melted pewter. I made the initial pieces out of Sculpey and then made the mold boxes out of extra foam core board that I had sitting around. The molds required some cleaning up after they were dry so that I could get a nice clean cast. Then I heated up my pewter on my grill outside so that I had good ventilation. The molds were dusted with cornstarch beforehand, the pewter was heated up, then I very carefully poured the hot metal into my molds. Shockingly, the first pour that I did came out really well and I ended up keeping this belt. I can't say the same thing for any of my other metal pieces. It was really a trial and error to make sure that I was getting a clean cast from each of these metal pieces. The nice thing is pewter can be reheated and melted down so that you could try this as many times as you need to. After feeling much more confident with this mold making business after the success of the belt buckle, I decided to try doing the hanging belt pieces with a two part mold. I created the hanging piece using Fimo clay and then embedded half of the piece into some more clay at the bottom of one of my mold making boxes. I made sure to add registration marks to this clay so that I could match up the pieces later on. At this point, I had also created the metal strap connector for the tops of the corset. I poured the first half of the mold onto the first half of the piece, then let it completely cure then added Vaseline as a mold release agent for the second half of the pour. Once these molds were done, I then cast these pieces. Casting the metal strap connectors was the most difficult part of this entire process, as I had to make sure that the cast was clean and had a flat backing to it. This was much more difficult than I had anticipated, and it ended up taking about 20 casts to get four pieces that looked decent. My two part mold ended up being a complete success and here you can see where I had cut a slit into the mold to allow the piece to be released. I didn't actually get any footage of me casting the piece out of this mold, but here you can see two of the pieces that I did cast with this method. I cut the ring off of one of them and then sanded the edges with a mouse sander for a nice clean effect. I polished the living daylights out of these to get them nice and shiny. Once these pieces were ready to be attached to the belt, I then used a piece of warbla to create a new link to connect to the rest of the hanging belt I had made previously. Overall, I'm really happy with how this belt came out. I didn't get any footage of it on me, but I will include it for future videos when I do the rest of the costume. Once the metal strap pieces were cast, I could then construct the straps and attach them to the corset. The front half of the strap was connected to the bias binding along the top edge of the bra cups, and the back half of the strap was attached by hand to the top edge of the corset. I'm very happy with how the corset itself came out. While it's not a perfect replica, I am very happy with the small changes that I had made to make it look more effective on my body. I'm especially proud of how all of the metal pieces came out as that was the part of the costume that I was the most nervous about. I am so happy to just be able to have this thing on my dress form in my sewing room at all times so I can look at it and give it hugs whenever I want. If you enjoy this video and you look forward to seeing more of the progress of this costume, please feel free to like and subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions and I look forward to seeing you all in my next video.